Principal Science here with your scientific word of the day. The word of the day is kleptothermy. Yeah, kleptothermy. Imagine that you are a reptile, a lizard or a snake, and you're feeling a little chilly. Well, that's quite understandable for an ectotherm. See, your body temperature rises and falls with your environment. So if you spend your day slithering around in the water or on the cold ground, it's going to take away your precious body heat. You could bask in the sun to remedy the cold. That's a classic way of working warmth back into a reptile body, and that is called kleptothermy. The scientific word of the day, kleptothermy, and that is a term of how reptiles bring warmth back into their bodies. Scientific word of the day, I'm Principal Science. Hi, this is Mrs. Cordell, and I am the science historian. So today we're going to be learning a little bit about, I have Ada Lovelace up here. Um, you might recognize her. We have a book called Ada Twist Scientist, which is kind of loosely based on just kind of what her life was. So she was a, a British mathematician born in 1815 and a computer programmer. When she was around 12 years old, she was very interested in flight and started studying birds. She even wrote a book about flight and she wanted to put wings on a horse and fly it. So she was very interested in science and flight and mathematician, uh, math when she was young. So as she got older, um, there's a person called Charles Babbage and he, he did this, it's called a difference engine and basically it's a calculating machine, like basically a giant calculator. And then he went on to build what's called an analytical engine, which he's the father of all computers. So this is kind of where computers got their start. Well, Ada Lovelace, she knew Charles Babbage and he wrote an article around this analytical engine and she helped to explain how it worked. He asked for her help because nobody really understood what he was trying to tell them. Well, she wrote an explanation for the analytical engine and she went even deeper into it. She said, you can actually program this. It's like a computer and you can actually program it. So she was the very first computer programmer. Oh, hello. It's me, Mrs. Dean, the queen of reading. You caught me reading one of my favorite books, Double Trouble and Walla Walla. As you know, Lulu got into quite a predicament when she was in this book. I myself was in quite the predicament last week when I got caught writing a sentence and I forgot to write silent E. I found myself writing, I like to fly in a plan. Oh, didn't I look silly forgetting silent E. So friends, take it from me. Don't forget, silent E in your words makes all the difference. I like to fly in a plane. Take it from Mrs. Steen, the queen of reading. You need silent E. Hi, I'm your math magician and I'm here to teach you a math trick today. We're going to talk about one more or one less. This is a great trick for when you're adding nine. So how I like to do it is when I'm adding one digit, I put two numbers. Here, I am going to do six plus nine. So I'm going to put six and then there's a blank here. So if I add a zero, I know it's not going to change the value of six. What's one more than zero? Well, zero plus one is one. And what's one less than six? So I know that 6 plus 9 equals 15. Let's do another one. Here I have 14. I'm going to put 14 underneath so I remember what I'm adding. And when I add 9 to it, I do one more. 1 plus 1 is 2 and 1 less. 4 minus 1 is 3. So my answer is 23. You know what? You can do this with really big numbers too. Here I have 89. One more, eight plus one is nine, and one less than nine is eight. So my number is 98. I have three problems here for you to try at home. Hi, I'm Dr. Freytag at Freytag Orthodontics, and I wanna show you guys how to brush properly. It's so important that you get rid of all those sugar bugs. 
So it's so important that you always brush the gums too. So of course you're gonna brush the teeth, but then you also wanna make sure you're brushing the gums. And you'd wanna do it on the outside, okay? And then you also need to do it on the inside and make sure you brush those gums and kinda of go in a circular motion, okay? Then you also wanna get the tops of the teeth because those get real dirty. And all those little crevices in here is where the food gets caught. So you wanna make sure you're really getting those good all around. So again, on the sides, circular motion, get the tooth and the gums, and then on the top, you want to get into those crevices a little rougher up there. Hello, I'm Miss Minker, and welcome to an Engineering Minute. Have you ever wondered what shape is the best for an engineer to use in order to build something? Could it possibly be a square, a rectangle, or like a bee, maybe a hexagon. Perhaps like a wheel could use, you know, this nice circle. Or is it possibly a triangle like the roofs of some houses? Let's find out. So if we take a closer look and I'm applying pressure like I would if I was driving along this bridge and I apply pressure, oh no, the square doesn't absorb the force that I'm putting upon it. Well, what about this hexagon? Oh no, the force also is not able to be absorbed. How about this circle? All right, oh no. I mean, it does a better job, but if you notice, it still sort of manipulates the shape. Well, what about this triangle? Oh, it seems like no matter where I apply the pressure, right, it's able to absorb. And that's because the force that I'm applying is being absorbed by the shape itself. So it's able to match that force that I'm placing upon it. So I hope that you will take a chance and build some awesome things out of a triangle. Hey friends, Prince I Pal here, and I have a great story I want to share with you. It's called Tommy Can't Stop. And this story is just about finding what you're great at and what you're passionate about and working until you find it and not giving up. So this is a great story. Tommy Can't Stop. So enjoy. Tommy Can't Stop by Tim Fetterly. Pictures by Mark Fearing. Tommy Can't Stop. Tommy's got bop. He can't keep still. I'm a pogo stick, he boasts when he bounces. I'm a bulldozer, when he, he clamors when he kicks. Tommy's got pop, he can't keep quiet. I'm an elephant, he calls when he clomps. I'm an antelope, he hollers when he hurdles. He's an animal, his sister pouts to their parents. Tommy's got to stop, his family can't. Keep up. I'm over the elephant, his dad cries when he cleans. I'm tired of the antelope, his mom trumpets before time out. He belongs in a zoo, his sister bawls to her bestie. Everyone takes a turn, tiring Tommy out. Dad said softball. But pogo sticks bounce off base. Mom sims swim club, but bulldozers don't work underwater. His sister says tap class. It's worth a try, Tommy. I'm not putting on pink, he moans in the minivan. I'm not touching a tutu, he pleads in the parking lot. He's a doubting Thomas, his mom announces when they arrive. The tap teacher begins bouncing. Wait, she twirls like Tommy. You're a pogo stick, he whispers as he watches. I call this a hop. Everyone hops, but Tommy hops the highest. The tap teacher kicks. Now Tammy starts to smile. You're a bulldozer, he stammers as he stares. 
I call this a brush. Everyone brushes, but Tommy brushes boulders. The tat tap teacher clomps, and Tommy's grin grows. You're an elephant, he bellows as he boogies. I call this a stamp, and don't call me an elephant. Everyone stamps, but Tommy stamps strongest. The tap teacher hurdles. Tommy giggles with glee. You're an antelope, he declares as he dances. It's called a leap. Everyone leaps, but Tommy leaps the longest. Tommy's got talent. You can't stop a star. He beams when he bows and glows when they gush, and he'll never have to tiptoe to be Tommy. Tommy can't stop, and he didn't stop until he found his passion. Enjoy this episode of Prince I Pal Science and Friends. Ta-ta for now.